Let's take a quick look at some of the different types of relationships we can have between tasks. In this first slide, we have the finish to start relationship. Fairly simple relationship. Basically what we're saying is that we have a relationship between the finish of task A and the start of task B. That way, task B cannot start until A is actually finished. Our example is we're going to want to paint the walls, that's task B, but we can't start that until install drywall is actually completed. Another common task relationship we see is a start to start. Basically, we're now describing a relationship between the start of one task and the start of another. In this case, we say that B cannot start until A is started. We can't level the concrete until we've actually started pouring the concrete. A finish to finish relationship basically describes a relationship now between uh, not only the finish of A, but also the finish of B. So we say that B cannot finish until task A is actually finished. Let's say that we're working on a building, we need to have an inspection of all the electrical work. We can't actually finish that inspection process until all the electrical work is completed. We can obviously be inspecting as the electrical work proceeds, but we can't actually finish that task until all the electrical work is done. The last type of task relationship is a relationship between the start of one task and the finish of another, a start to finish. That is fairly rare because what we're doing here is we're saying that task B cannot finish until task A is started. Now there may be certain industries or certain areas of specialty in which this task relationship may be used more commonly, but it is one that uh, I think we can consider to be fairly rare in general. The example that I found uh, for how we might uh, have two tasks that are linked in this way was an example where we have some plants that have to be wet when fertilizer is applied. So we need to start watering the garden, task B, first to get the plants wet. But we have to keep on doing that. We really cannot finish until the fertilization process starts. So uh, the time in which we actually finish task B is dependent on the starting of task A. So now that we've looked at these four types of task relationships, let's look at how lags enter into the picture. Here we have a finish to start relationship, but what we have is a four day lag that's been added into this relationship. Let's say that uh, after the time period where we're installing the drywalls, we need that drywall, um, what they call mud, drywall mud to actually um, get hard and uh, dry correctly before we start painting. <clears throat> so we're going to add a four day lag. We don't extend the duration of, of task A. That would actually mean that we're doing more work. Um, really there's no work being done. We're just letting the, the drywall dry out. So let's look at how that actually affects us as we move through the forward uh, pass of our network. So we take uh, do that calculation within A. Normally we take that 4 from A from the uh, early finish and we move that to the early start of B. But instead we're going to add 4 days so that we get 8 as the early start of B. So that's how we take into account that lag. Likewise on the backward pass instead of taking this 8 from the uh, late start of B and moving that into the late finish of A, we're going to take that 8, but we're going to first subtract off 4 to get uh, the value that we need to enter into A there. Let's look at how lags affect a start-to-start -start relationship. This is something that we tend to see fairly common, that we say that um, B can go ahead and get started two days after A starts. Okay, so for example, install furniture, we can start installing the furniture two days after the install carpet process begins. So maybe we have a large building, we can start moving in the furniture once that install carpet process begins and some of the carpet is already laid down in certain places. So we need a two day lag. Let's look once again at how that affects the forward and backward pass. 
So we start out with zero. We make our calculations there, but notice we have no relationship between the finish of A and the start of B. We do, however, have a relationship between the start of A and the start of B. So we take that zero and we simply add two days to it, and we get the value that we're going to start out with the uh, early start date for B. Do our calculations there, and then when we're making a pass back through the network, 10 minus 8 equals 2. Instead of just transferring that uh, into the uh, late finish, we're actually going to be influencing now the um, late start uh, of A. So what we do here is we're going to take that 2, we're going to minus 2, and we can actually put it then back into A. So it's very important to think about um, where the relationships are. So notice that we have no relationship. We can't put a value into that bottom uh, right hand square there of A based on the information we know in this diagram because we have no relationship to the uh, finish time of A from B. Okay, so hopefully that shows us a little bit about these four different task relationships and how lags are going to factor into it.